the last video in the crowd concept 6 and we'll finally get into some vex for the very last crowd trigger we'll set up we'll be controlling the agents dynamically by doing a simple change that's calculated in real time and override the velocity and direction dynamically in the simulation the protagonist agent is going to sort of chase away the gang of crowds by directing them away from the protagonist basic concept number 6d vex in crowd sim there is a correction I wanted to make from the previous Crowds Concept 6C video. At the very end, I typed into the group parameter of the Crowd Transition 4 node, which is the very last crowd triggers we're setting up, and I typed in S at agent type equals to. The S prefixing is not necessary and will not work. When you're specifying attribute values within the group parameter, you can't denote the type. The at symbol is enough when you're using it in a group parameter like what's shown here. Now that we got that out of the way, I'm going to move on and continue where we left off. Now there is one more thing I want to show you uh, in the spreadsheet that'll come in super handy. When is the crowd actually triggered? Can I actually see something in the spreadsheet, uh, something that is definitive rather than looking at the viewport and trying to guess it if it switches or not? There is actually something we can do. Now let me remove all these just for a second. Okay, I'm going to scroll over a bit so you can actually see some of the attributes. Here is what I wanted to show you. Move this over to see the whole name. You'll see that these are actually crowd trigger attributes. Tr crowd trigger one, crowd trigger two. Let me expand this one. So crowd trigger two and crowd trigger three. So every single time we put down one of these crowd triggers, it will spawn one of these guys. So this is a definitive way for us to know in the spreadsheet to debug if the scene is doing, if our agents are doing what we want. Now I'm going to put back what I had before. This text box is really, really small and I don't know how to make this bigger. So I would if I could. So this is the states that uh, I'm trying to, f this, these are the attribute names that I'm filtering in this little text box over here. So we have the state because we want to see the state. We want to see the newly created group walk away. And we, I also want to know if the crowd trigger is actually working. So this crowd trigger, which is named crowd trigger four. So that's crowd trigger and it goes underscore crowd trigger four, which is the name of the node. So the name of the node goes here, followed by the underscore. So if I were to change this name over here, instead of okay let's just do it let's just change it distance trigger then this would have to be called distance underscore trigger so we can just keep that okay so let's take all this copy it and put it into these attributes let's see what we get okay i just needed to play a few frames and for it to get created so the first frame it's it's not created yet second frame you can see all three states the one line of vex code that we put it into the point group is in the crowd transition. That means there's something wrong with our crowd transition. And that's because we're not filtering it. In the group, we have nothing here. We need to apply the same sort of logic to the transition. But the transition is a little bit bit tricky because it's transitioning from one state to another. I would not rely on the stream group anymore. Like like how we had it in the crowd crowd trigger, we had these stream groups that are automatically created for us based on the available crowd states that we plugged in that we had set up. I would not rely on that for the crowd transition simply because the crowd transition is the one that switches states. So it's not a good idea to rely on the stream groups because they're changing dynamically in the crowd simulation itself. What can we filter? What, what can we do about this? Again, we can't not rely on the agent type, the custom attribute that we created, the agent type because we only want to apply the transition. We only want to apply this group to a specific point of time to this, to the gang of group. If we rely on the agent type, which is static, which is always that, we can't rely on that. We need to know when this trigger is actually triggered and then apply this. Well, we actually do know it. Thanks to this crowd trigger attribute that gets created, we do know. So this is not triggered. They're, all of these are not triggered. And this just has a value zero because it, it doesn't apply to the protagonist. Remember the protagonist has a point 
number of zero because it's the first agent being added. So we always know this is the protagonist character. These ones are the gang of uh, agents all the way down. So they have a value of negative one. Well, we're interested in applying this point group when they have a value of one, not negative one, but one, because we're interested when it's actually being triggered. A nice way to cheat is to crowd trigger underscore crowd. We renamed the node, so it was distance trigger. Oh, and we equals to one. So equals to one. Remember the at symbol. Don't forget this at symbol right here. This at symbol means look into the spreadsheet. It's in the spreadsheet. Okay, let's let's give it a try. Let's just run it. Jumps, gets close, close, close. And look at this. So we, we still have those negative one values. The trigger is not happening yet. Good. Because our protagonist is still running. But when he gets close, you can see that the running, it, it's changing. The protagonist is getting into the walking state and some of them are turning and you can see this is zero 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 and they're changing to one some of them are changing to one so zero is like sort of the middle values because this trigger only happens to the idle state and you can see that the walk away is being applied so we start off here Okay, zero one zero one. Some of them are applied, some of them are not. That's this, and but it's still idle. This this is the weird place where from the delay. So this is due to the duration delay. It's still in the idle, but they're not really. They're in transitioning to it, and it's in that duration period. But what you can take out of it is that some of these are zeros and some of these are ones. So it is happening. We are getting as opposed to what we had before. They were all ones right at the beginning of the scene. Then you know it wasn't working because that was not what we wanted. This just puts it into the right group and they are starting to walk, but they're not walking away. So why am I going to get it into a point group? Because we need to overwrite the velocity using a pop wrangle. Now all these techniques you can use in different approaches to manipulate these agents in different ways. So I'm showing you different ways of accessing, classifying, or organizing the agents so that you can manipulate in your own scene drop down a pop wrangle and overwrite the velocity well the pop wrangle we only want to apply pop wrangle to this group of agents that are in the walking state that are in this walk away group as well so what we can do in this pop wrangle enable this group and we actually can see the walk away group now let's overwrite it let's overwrite the velocity now we already have the direction. Remember, we already have the direction from the SOPs that we pre-calculated ahead of time. So let's go back up. This is what we had. Should make it a purple node. So this is pre-calculated. We stored the direction of where they need to head in a, a V at dir. So all we had to do is grab that in the uh, crowd simulation and overwrite the velocity with it. So let's go back to the dot net. In the pop wrangle, now let's expand our filter again. So we can actually see it. So we want to see the dir, and we also want to see the V because we're going to overwrite the V. So let's grab this copy and come here, control V, enter. So we can see that dire uh, direction and state and velocity. So velocity is zero for our small gang of agents so far, but that will change. Come over here. Now we want to overwrite it. So V at V because we want to overwrite the velocity and velocity is a vector. So that's what this V at symbol is for equals V at dir because that's the direction that we already stored ahead of time multiplied by some sort of speed. Well, I want to make that flexible parameter so we can adjust. So let's do this. So this, what this function does, it says channel of a float type. CH is the channel that we want to grab from this node. So it's all these little parameters, these guys here, these text boxes that are found on this panel, on this wrangle. Grab the float. This is the type. Well, it's going to be a float type. It's going to be 0 0.1, 0 0.2, 1 0.6, 6.5, whatever. It's going to be something dot like point decimal something and what's the name of the parameter speed now i'm going to create it just because there that like there is no speed parameter on here so you can press this little button over here and it'll automatically create it for us it'll appear right here one speed of one and right away you can see the velocity update you can see that there's actually speed up compared to the zero that it had before we uh set it so i can do it again so it goes zero so it's no velocity one there's velocity now there is one more thing we need to um, we need to adjust 
you need to come over here to the inputs. Click this tab and input, you actually have to grab itself. Otherwise, the stuff here, like it's not going to read the direction. It's not going to be able to get it. So you have to come over to the inputs for input number one, because treat this as a normal stop wrangle. Whatever's on the first input, I know it says input one, two, three, four, but it's zero based in, in the software. So whatever you have plugged in the first input will be whatever you access with these little at symbols. So what we want here is myself. Okay, let's go back here. They're starting to walk, but they're, they're going too fast. You can see that the speed that they're whooshing through, they are walking. So, if, oh, sorry. If you look closely, they are walking. It's just that the velocity is way too fast. So we can adjust the speed. And there's something else that's wrong. The velocity is pointing in the wrong direction. You can see these little arrows. They're not going in the right place. In order to reverse the direction, we, we need it to go in the other direction. I'm going to multiply negative 1 to this. Negative 1 multiply to all of this. That should just reverse the direction. And I'm going to reduce the speed as well. So let's go 0.65. Just because that's the number that I already tried with and it works for me. So it is a little funny. You can see they shoot out really quickly, but they're not walking right away. Now that's because of the delay, the duration delay. Now I'm going to make this duration a lot smaller and I'm going to be doing 0.4 just because I've already tested it and it works out for me for 0.4. And I'm going to fix this ramp to what I already tested it with. So I'm kind of cheating because I already did this due to time constraints. You don't want to watch me do this. Come here. Okay, let's try this. See if this goes a little bit more smoother. Okay, that's way more smoother. And it's it, it's more natural. They're moving away more naturally. Now, this is still not as dynamic as I would want it to be. Why? Because it's actually using a predetermined, pre-calculated direction. And that's not what I want. I want them to be dynamic. So let's make, let's get a little smart and have our little gang of agents move away from the protagonist character. So treat this pop wrangle just like assault. How do we get the position of this protagonist character in the wrangle? How do we actually access it? Well, how do we access the position of any point in the SOP wrangle? We use the point attribute vex function. The only difference in the pop wrangle is that we have to set it up in this input tab right here. So we have to go to the input tab and we actually have to say, what do we need? What do we grab? If you're ever needing something from the SOP level or from the DOP data, right now we're reading it from itself. So we're actually getting everything in this spreadsheet. We should be good. And we know that the this protagonist character has a point number zero. I believe we have everything we need. Let's give it a try. Let's go to the code and let's grab it. We're going to replace the V direction. So let's grab point attribute. This will grab any point attribute data from the spreadsheet. Geometry is the first one we want. So which input basically? So it's zero input. Remember, it's zero index based. So it's the first input. And then let me go back to get the tooltip. And we want the attribute name. Well, what's the attribute name? Well, we just want P because we want the position of the protagonist character. So it's quotes. Remember, they need it in the name of the attribute. So it is a string. So you have to put it around quotes. And then we need the point number. Well, we know the point number. It's zero because our protagonist character is has a point number zero. Okay, so let's see what else. Uh, success. So this is this is something I don't usually use. I usually just put a default zero. It, it will work fine because I don't we don't need it for this particular case. So just put zero and then that should get it. the vector position. And we're replacing this direction uh, attribute. So instead, I'm going to say dir. So I'm going to go make another direction. Cools. Now, how do we calculate the direction? We want the gang of people to move away from the protagonist. You subtract the current position from the protagonist's position at P minus position. Now, that's not enough because we have to normalize this as well. Direction needs to be normalized. So wrap it around, normalize, and let's see. Let's let's run it. Okay, it's they're walking towards 
the protagonist character. So we have the direction in the wrong way. Let's reverse the subtraction and then let's try it again. This should be working. They should be walking this way now. So this is indeed working. They're walking away from the protagonist. So that's pretty cool. So you this will hopefully kickstart you off into your own complex crowd simulations using this. Remember, the sky's the limit. It doesn't have to just overwrite the V. You can overwrite the speed. You can overwrite... Um, they could be playing tag. And if someone that is it gets close, they can speed up. And this is the perfect... Instead of overwriting the velocity, you can increase the velocity. As they get closer, they run faster. Or you can change the direction. If they get closer, they could turn. If, if they're found on the left side, you can go to the right side. You can man manipulate the direction. You can manipulate the state. Hopefully, this gives you a lot more power. This has a lot of flexibility. This finally wraps it up for Crowds Concept 6. This turned out to be a lot longer than I expected, and I may take a short break from Crowds in the next video, just because Concept 6 took a lot out of me. The next one may be a destruction video that I'll add a new concept video to the cinematic destruction mini-series I started a few months ago. This is just a small reward for myself to do something else other than crowds just for a while, but I'll be back with crowds hopefully very soon because I do have a lot of topics that involve combining the vellum and crowds and material sheets and a lot more other stuff that I've planned on my list. Thanks for watching and sticking to the end.